Blake. All right, my name is Adam Bresson. I don't know if you guys have heard me talk before. I've talked the last couple of years. Um, I'm talking tonight about uh, Manonymity, which is a web application that I wrote that's new, GPL, that you guys can download and install on your own and link up with other servers. So Manonymity, it's who you don't know. You'll notice there's a little GM at the top of it. That's my new creation. It's called a new mark. It's a free trademark or copyright that you can hand out as long as you distribute it with the application. So everything is free and everything is for you guys this time. As opposed to all the other speakers who are awful and mean. To think about PHP distributed encryption, what does that mean? We're going to talk about uh, what this application does. It's written in PHP. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I actually talked two years ago on PHP security stuff. So you'll see some of those ideas implemented in here too. Think about what is an acceptable level of mass market encryption. So if you were taking it out to the people, the consumers who are out there and they're doing their email text and it's like my boss or your boss or your friend and they don't really know much about encryption and they want a really easy way to do it, the easiest way would be via the web. And I know that there are other implementations out there for email like Hushmail and other systems like that, but this is designed to create as many of these servers as independently as possible. Also, to make it easier to log in, you can log in at any server and it will forward you to the right one. How does the average Joe fingerprint and protect their daily communication? Well, I can tell you how they do that because my mom, my mom protects her, her emails in the following way. Dear Adam, I was wondering if you would like to go out for lunch today. I'll pay. Here is my credit card. And then she writes it there. So I can go ahead and make a reservation and get some food to go. I don't think that's right. She's sending her credit card through email. But my mom would love this. In fact, this is just for my mom and all of you. What are the true benefits? I know, does it make your heart warm? Makes you cry. You're hungry. What are the true benefits of open source versus major company owned encryption services? Hushmail is uh, owned out of the country. I think an Israeli company created it originally. Um, I like something that's open source because as you guys know from looking at Linux and different implementations, everyone gets to uh, go through the files and, and determine whether there's a security risk or how it could be improved. And uh, part of what we're going to do today, in addition to showing you guys an implementation of it on here, is we're going to talk about ways that we can continue to improve it if you guys get interested in it. And I hope you are because by the end of this speech, I'm going to be jumping up and down and waving my hands. This is so exciting. What percentage of your daily digital communication is sent encrypted? That's an important question. And how do we accelerate the adoption of PHP at the server level? Currently, there are about, by estimates, between 1.5 and 3 million PHP websites out there. Um, but it's actually kind of plateaued. Over the last year, that number hasn't increased. Uh, so we'll talk about things like this that can bring that number up high very quickly. What we're going to talk about, uh, we'll do some questions and answers at the end. We're going to talk about a general discussion of encryption methods, the basics, some of the theories and application uh, for it. We're going to do an introduction to anonymity, and you guys are going to see in depth how to install anonymity, and then you're going to actually see a demo also of setting up your own server from scratch. Also, we're going to go in and um, <clears throat> configure anonymity. So I divide it into the admin side and the user side. So you guys are going to be the admins and hopefully the users as well. And you'll see how to administer anonymity, look at reports, it has alerts built in, and tools. And you'll also see how to use anonymity as a member, and you'll see a demonstration of text encryption and fingerprinting, and uh, the extensible nature of it as well. And at the end, we'll do a review, a future, and we'll talk about some questions. Who I am, I've been doing computers for 10 plus years. I guess I look like a nerd, you know, I got that scruffy, scruffy face. There I am, looking incredibly disaffected. And uh, I got the cool shirts from Jinxwear. And I got all that exciting nerd stuff. I've been, uh, I spoke on Palm Security Talk. Oh, and by the way, in case anyone was wondering here, I also have achieved the ultimate status symbol, a wonderful, wonderful girlfriend who accepts the fact that I compute for 16 hours a day. I spoke on Palm Security in 2000. And in 2001, I spoke about PHP and data mining. We actually talked about some proof of concepts in that for uh, uh, PHP-based port scanners and things like that. Um, last year, I spoke about consumer media protections, and it was actually covered by that same news van that's out there. 
I started Recommendo.com, which is a web co uh, community devoted to what you like connections between movies, TVs, books, and music, and they're human-based reviews. So it's not, uh, as you would think, maybe an algorithm-based site. It's someone telling someone else what they might like. I also co started GetAnyGame.com with two other people. We mentioned it last year. Maybe you guys have seen the flyers over in the retail booth. We have some of the retailers helping us out. We rent video games by mail online, and we let you guys send in your old games you don't play and make $2 every time they rent. So you don't have to get that one-time instant gratification of 7 to $10. My, that is a disaffected picture there. You want answers? Okay, what is an acceptable level of mass market encryption? 128-bit SSL is standard in the browser and OS. We need fingerprinting, encryption, and steganography. We'll go into a definition of what those are. If you guys are just getting started, if you have familiarity with it, you can just uh, cover your ears for that part. How does the average Joe fingerprint and protect their daily communication? Well, they can use anonymity, which is M for short. For everyone who couldn't figure out my sophisticated scheme of uh, shortening the name anonymity. Uh, for multiple points of access for maximum reliability. What this means is when you uh, create a anonymity server from the admin side, you actually register the server. You have to register it with an email address. It also has a unique ID, and it's stored in a database at mananimity.com. Then people can actually find anonymity servers that are close to them. So say you log into one that, uh, you know, you want to log into one in Arizona. You can go ahead and go to the main page, and it has a list of all the servers once they get started. And you can see which ones are up and what types of encryption they offer. It comes with two types of encryption, which we'll get into in a little bit. I'll discuss some ideas for additional ones. <clears throat> what are the true benefits of open source versus major company-owned encryption services? Open source is expandable. Solid, reliable, free of influence, political, etc. One of the reasons why I designed this so that you guys can just unzip it, click a couple scripts and get it started, is so if you're out of the country, if you're from Mexico or France or Scot Scotland, uh, you could go ahead and start your own server where encryption may or may not be um, illegal, certain methods of it. In addition to that, the reason that you plug modules into it are because maybe you can use Blowfish, you, maybe you can use 1024-bit uh, you know, encryption, but you can't use that in another area of the country or world. What percentage of your daily digital communication is sent unencrypted? The national average is 15%. That's just 15% of all communication. That's web browser communication, email communication. That makes me sad. I'd like to see 50% of it, because there's a lot of important info, like my mom's credit card out there that you guys can check on. How do we deem information important? We test it. Would a leak cause detrimental effect? I think this is one of the best tests you can apply for how critical information is. And that's, you know, if someone got that, could they do bad, malicious things with it? How do we accelerate the adoption of PHP at the server level? A lot of high quality applications that are anywhere deployable. I listened to some of the other talks here over the last few days, and I know that some of the things like the Luna Correspondence Protocol, I don't know if you guys sat in on that, they could be implemented via PHP very easily. Then they'd actually be cross-platform instead of having to compile it across. Like, I'm running it on Windows here. I have it running on a Unix server, uh, mananimity.com. And uh, I mean, that's the, one of the best ways you can do it. You can read the code, it's C-like, and it's easy. PHP that pushes the boundaries and innovates, and PHP that opens new markets and propels the language's development. One of the things I've noticed about the language of PHP is that it has the mcrypt library for encryption, but it doesn't have simple native uh, calls in it without having to load a library to do encryption. I wrote my own very simple one. Anyone can write their own very simply. Um, I'm going to go over what I did here. Uh, but I would like to see, hopefully, propel the language to actually develop some basic uh, two-way encryption in there. There are several one-way encryption schemes in there. Why use encryption? Well, 40-bit SSL can be cracked by an Intel Pentium 266 in one hour. That's where we're at now. And that's using, well, I would say, like a medium speed attack on it. Reduce leaks of competitive company, company information and reduce liability. There was a talk earlier about uh, corporate, uh, gaining corporate information and gleaning corporate information off their websites. Um, I don't know, why would you put up there the name of your vice president, your CEO, and your email scheme so that someone else could grab it? ITWorld.com says encryption provides authentication, integrity, and accountability. I like this description of it. We like authentication. We want to remain anonymous. We like integrity, some way to ensure that the information being delivered is being delivered in the original format. 
And we also like accountability. We like to know that only the person you intend to open or read information can. Unencrypted records can be subpoenaed. This is very interesting. If you do one-way encryption on something like, we'll say, MD5, or if you do two-way encryption, it's much, much harder because if they go and they get your memo, say you use cut and paste, which is one of the methods here in the simple module I wrote, if someone gets that memo and they can't read it, they have to input it, they have to get access to it, you could say, I don't know, I, I don't remember the key. I don't remember what I did. I'm not, you know, anonymity is designed not to take your personal information in, so it doesn't actually make you accountable for the encryption that you do. It adds only the accountability on the receiver side. Maintain file integrity over lossy TCP IP. Uh, one of the things that the Lunar Correspondence Protocol was talking about was how inefficient ICMP is as an actual protocol. Um, I don't know. I find sometimes that I get that zip file that I can't open after someone sent it to me in my email. I like to know that it's the actual file they sent, not been interrupted in the uh, man in the middle. As someone was talking about earlier, doing man in the middle attacks on webs. Anonymity is easy with a quick learning curve and more sophisticated features as the expertise grows. It's designed for you guys to decide what you want to offer people if you run your own anonymity server. So you can start with something simple. I mean, I just use a, in my text encryption module, it's just byte shifting. Um, I'm going to present some ideas that we can go take in a different direction. You guys know that with the, uh, <clears throat> with the GD graphics library for PHP, you could actually use it to read in a graphics file go byte by byte through it and use steganography on it. You can transform that live. Key concepts, an algorithm, mathematical formula used to transfer form information from its original point. Fingerprinting, representing a file with a one-way key. MD5 is 32-bit that only the unique makeup of that file would yield. Encryption, replacing information with a new representation of that information, often using an algorithm. Steganography, hiding information almost imperceptibly in a picture or other file. You guys will find at the end I put some utilities on the DEF CON disk to try out some of these tactics. <clears throat> Geometric transformation, which is what I'll talk about uh, um, in my own encryption. This is an idea that uh, I've been trying to work with and come up with and try to make it as uh, efficient as possible. Um, it's designed to have a quick computation time with hopefully uh, a high level of unreadable encryption and not as susceptible to many of the attacks. Geometric transformations, I'm sorry that's a little, that's a little light. Basically use geometric formulas such as the area of a circle as an algorithm to generate strong, difficult to re reverse results when encrypting. So some of the routines out there would use like factoring to do, uh, you know, prime examples, PH, PGP uses factoring. We would then use um, <clears throat> common geometric, geometric formulas. For example, the area of a circle. Given the area of a circle, calculate the dot density of the perimeter. So you know you can have a, a, a circle with a thousand dots, a million dots, which would be essentially the, similar to the size of a key. Use the simple dot density value to reverse for the area. The area plus the dot density value gives you a seed, and you send the dot density value via email, or you hand it to someone in person. It could be used with other functions and shapes. It could be combined and strung together like a chain. One of the things you'll see with my anonymity modules here is that you can actually tie them together. This is the anonymity logo. It is also a new mark. You guys can use it when you put your own anonymity servers up. What is it? It's distributed. It's an encryption system with a centralized server list used to link logon information, facilitate searches, and alert installations RE updates. One of the things you'll notice is when we get in the tools section of anonymity, you'll see that there's an alert section. What it'll actually do is tell you if there's an update for it, new modules available, things that you guys can use. Um, in terms of running it from the admin side, a question you guys might have that might come up right now is, how anonymous am I? Are they really going to trace it back to me? You basically have to come up with a name for your server and a valid email. That's it. Go out and get yourself a Yahoo or Hotmail account. It's modular. Add additional encryption options using secure authenticated delivery as they become available, i.e. steganography for MP3. <clears throat> you'll find that uh, each of the modules that you can get other than the default ones, like I'm working on a steganography right now for uh, JPEGs and GIFs, will actually uh, let you guys, you download it, you authorize it by using the MD5 of it and you're ready to go. And I hope it's innovative for you guys. It's designed to bring encryption to everyone by making fingerprinting and encryption accessible without sacrificing the option of more sophisticated features. One of the things that's important about this is that in addition to giving you guys a free tool and something that I really believe in and is really exciting, 
Um, I also want it to be something that everyone can use because you shouldn't have to be able to have command line Linux skills and bash to be able to run something. Key points. You'll find that it's easier to use than existing add-on Windows or Linux apps that compute MD5 hashes. Quick email links provide one-click accessibility of verification. There's two things you can do with the text. You can send it to so you can send someone a link or you can save it and then they can return and use your public pin code which you'll see later to read it or get that MD5 hash. New methods of encryption ranging from simple byte shifting or ZOR to complex. Geometric transformation or two fish are immediately usable. When you get that module, when that module comes out of beta, when you guys contribute your own modules to it, you'll be able to plug them into any server and anyone will be able to, be able to take advantage of them. Plug-in modules allow deployments to evolve as fingerprinting encryption methods change. Say that there uh, comes about a significant attack on MD5. Someone's able to uh, reduce the time it takes to go back through an MD5 attack and actually spoof it or something like that. Well, we'll be able to change the module really quickly. You guys will get a little update alert underneath your alerts in your tools section, and you'll be able to download the new module and replace it. Open source should ensure it's rock solid, smooth, and fast. I want nothing more than you guys to come to me and tell me you guys written your own modules or improved on some of the security of it. You'll see some of the security techniques in a little bit. What its requirements are, Apache 1.3.x, PHP 4.3.x, and MySQL 4.0.x, and Mcrypt. Mcrypt's actually optional. Um, I think that a lot of people are going to want to take advantage of Mcrypt. It's really hard to use. I mean, even in the latest implementations, it requires a lot of effort to get it to work reliably. And there's some differences between Windows and Unix and Linux. That's why I didn't write it in Mcrypt. Okay. We're going to start off with installing Mananimity. First step is you download the zip or tar from Mananimity.com. You'll find the latest version of... Uh, uh, very important for Apache, PHP, and MySQL before you guys install it. Make sure you guys have the latest versions of it. Like, for example, Apache 2.x is experimental with PHP 4. It still is. It doesn't run as fast as Apache 1.3.x. <clears throat> Only turn on PHP options and PHP any dot, uh, recommended that are required. For example, li limit the execution time. This makes uh, this are some of the methods that we talked about in one of my last talks to improve the security of your PHP, MySQL, and Apache server. Move all MySQL user accounts except localhost root and add a strong password. Obviously, I, yeah, I don't know. This has always bugged me. MySQL comes with uh, like completely open access. So you have to go in and modify the user database in there. And uh, that's something really important before you put an anonymity server on there to have a secure server implementation. Set new values for max execution time and memory limit compatible with your hardware. And only open Apache HTTP port 80 through the firewall and watch Slashdot for recent patches. Okay, you guys can download and unzip <coughs> from mananimity.com the latest version of it. I'm going to post it up tonight after the talk because I want to get maybe if you guys have some input after the talk. I'll be over here for questions. Maybe I make some quick changes to it and put it up for you. It's compatible with Linux and Windows. It's been tested on both. Um, and uh, it's pretty much identical. The tar and zip are identical. It comes with two modules, tcrypt and MD5 finger must authorize it and uh, it uses an MD5 hash for the download and you get to unpack it <clears throat> with its, uh, it's, built, it's got the www directory structure already in place so you guys can just lop it underneath home or a protected user account. Now <clears throat> we have the, uh, the main file mconfig.php options. I actually um, in the last couple days have automated this so you don't have to ma manually set these options. But we're going to go over the options that are important to the program anyway. Verify the master server searches uh, matches the M home page. That's hard coded now. Set the server root to your absolute URL. I used a PHP environment variable so you guys don't have to do that anymore. Create the MySQL database. This is something you guys have to do. You'll find in the, in, uh, in the distribution package the SQL structure in a .SQL file. You just basically can pop it in with PHP my admin or from the command prompt in SQL. Set the security level. It comes to fault set to high. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means. I recommend leaving it on high, but uh, if that's not something you guys want to do, it's completely up to you. Part of what this does is let you guys create an identity for your own servers and try to get some interest in getting encryption out there to people. Configure the color scheme via hex or word color codes. I actually have now this in uh, drop down, which I'm going to show you guys in the preferences section too. You're going to run the test installation tool, which you'll see here, and make changes accordingly to it. 
Mananimity won't accept logins until the test installation generates zero errors. It does a little self-check. It checks the files, checks to make sure the variables are set, make sure you've named your server, and then it will actually let it execute. And it does this all the time. Um, every time a script runs, every time someone tries to log into the server, it's actually running the test installation script. Also run register server after you guys set up your preferences. It will allow you guys to register with the master server. You get a unique ID with your server, and uh, it will also allow you guys to add your installation to it and allow us to, uh, mananimity.com, to pull for availability for you guys. All right, now I'm going to show you guys a demo of configuring mananimity. Since I've already completed the magic of the internet, Okay, this is what Mananimity's home page looks like. We're going to open up the tools page. You'll find these steps also in a text file inside of it. You log in with your admin email. And it has a default password too, which I recommend, of course, resetting. Okay, <clears throat> this is what the tools section of Mananimity looks like here. I hope you guys can see it from all angles here. At the top, it lists your welcome, your email address, and things that you have. You'll find your Mananimity server information here, which is your server ID, the name you've given your server, the security level, and the email for reference. Um, Mananimity server alerts underneath it. There are no alerts right now. You'll find reports in there. One of the reports is the module statistics, how many people are using the, uh, the tcrypt or the MD5 finger or any other modules you guys do. Uh, you can also view date range reports, members that have signed up, their information, so you guys can track it. And then at the bottom is preferences. Underneath preferences, you get to set your preferences really quickly here. You name your server. Well, you name your server at the top. You get to name it once so you guys know. If you change your server name, if you do a new implementation of it, it will actually show up under a different unique ID on the main mananimity.com website. So um, basically the old server becomes orphaned, but it's set to actually take servers off the list if they aren't active for 24 hours. We should go ahead and set an obnoxious color scheme. We'll use fuchsia. We'll use, it's like the grossest color ever, lime, and we will use olive. Okay, you guys can see, uh, after we did this, it actually assigns a unique server ID to you. It leaves the name, so you can't change it again. And it actually goes up to, uh, I don't have an internet connection here, and I apologize, they said it's down, but it actually also registers your server at mananimity.com with your server name, your server ID, and the available modules that you have. <clears throat> and you can see that the obnoxious color scheme we generated is present here. <laughs> Fuchsia. Disgusting olive and lime. Okay. So what you guys have to make sure to do here is have your Apache PHP and MySQL in place. Download the latest version of Mananimity from mananimity.com. Unzip it to uh, your www root. Configure the options. Run the test installation server and the register server and present the opening screen. Now we'll get into adminning and maintaining mananimity. <sighs> Does that look cool when I do that? How can I be even cooler up here on stage than talking about PHP? I don't know. <laughs> maintaining inter server relationships. Sometimes my internal monologue comes out. Why should you maintain internal relationships, uh, inter-server relationships? This is a question someone might ask. Why, when you have an anonymity, uh, an anonymous uh, PHP-based web application, would you want it to link somewhere? Well, it's really important that you have a list of anonymity servers. It doesn't reveal information. It doesn't give your email out. It doesn't give anything like that. And the and the ID can't be solved backwards either. Um, it ensures the universal login via login forwarding. So if someone tries to log in a server that's not there. It actually authenticates it back to mananimity.com, which keeps a list of usernames and their registered home servers, and will actually forward you on to the registered home server. So they don't have to worry about that, which might be a point of confusion. 
They can have integrated searches, say they want to find servers in their region by their zip code that has the steganography module in it. They'll see a, a server list at the M home page, which communicates the server status, popularity, and modules. Don't forget to add your MD5 admin password. Please change that. You know, it's stored MD5 one way. It doesn't have your password in the database, but um, you have to change it. After registering your server, you can run update server info. So if you've already done that, uh, if you've already actually added modules or done things like that, it will alert you and tell you that you have to run the update server info uh, tool. That will register your latest changes at mananimity.com. You get reports and alerts with it. Some of the statistics calculated in real time include the number of active uses of each module, member signups, and volume indicators. Reports include the number and percentage of historical uses of the modules, member detail, database consistency. The alerts are delivered, as you guys saw before, in a task list format in the admin area, and it will highlight uh, unperformed maintenance for you. That's the alert section and updates. Most alerts will have an associated link or action, too. So you'll be able to say, it'll say, you, don't, you haven't set a name for your server yet. You've added a module and haven't updated your server info. And you'll see a link to that page, that tool. Adding modules. You can get the latest module list at, uh, list at mananimity.com slash mods. Um, you'll also find a link to it in your tools section. Download a module, read the readme text, drop it into the modules directory. And then you use authorize new module. You have to use the MD5, which you get off the website and you tell it to, uh, to authenticate the module, and then you're ready to go. It won't run without that, and the reason I did that is so that people can't write, you know, people can't actually write, say, rogue modules for it that would capture information or something like that. Um, and verify the module availability on the live site, so make sure you guys can get to it, because you guys have login names too. Tools, you'll see customization. One of the things you can do is change the news, which is uh, on the front page. I'll just give you a simple example of that while we're here. We'll go into the preferences section, go to the news, and change it to. Yes. And we'll also change the colors, because that gives me great, great joy. OK. So now you've done it. You changed the news. And the news now says, my girlfriend is really cute. Change it to anything you want. It just gives you guys a little bit of flexibility, and it's built into it. E God, that's an awful tab color at the top. All right. <clears throat> you can actually also uh, suspend and deactivate people from it, and you can send them emails. You can also test and register the server, which we talked about. You can authorize a new module. You choose from the list. You enter the auth code that you got off the website. It's an MD5, and you're ready to go. And we'll also catalog your server and upload a module list and verify when you use the update server info tool. Now I'm going to show you guys some anonymity stuff, reports, alerts, and tools here. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I cannot do a download, but I'm going to show you guys the module because I don't have a uh, live internet connection here. So I want to make sure to show you guys that. OK, so this is a typical module. It has a very simple structure. It has declarations at the top. It has an initialization string. It has step one and step two. Step one's user input. Step two or is any kind of processing you need to do on it. Um, and you guys can write your own modules based on these ones, the default ones. I also have a module style sheet that's in the zip file for you guys, too. Whoa. And then you'll also see here the module statistics in the reports, and you'll see uh, additional reports as well on the live server. OK, from a user perspective, what would someone gain out of uh, using anonymity? Well, it's anonymous in that you only have to use an email address, and there are plenty of free email addresses you can use out there. You get to create your own PIN code. You don't have to enter your personal information, but you can perform Anything from simple to complex encryption using the different modules. From a user perspective, uh, the member accounts link encrypted content to a member profile with account rights. When you set uh, the security level of anonymity to high, medium, or low, you can actually decide whether they have the option to send and save, which is high, or whether they have the option to send, save, and then email and encrypted to, which is medium. Or you could set it actually to low and then basically um, anyone could read anyone's without using a PIN code, which would be kind of silly, but that's there for you. <laughs> member security, the only information required is a valid member name, 
an email, and it is linked to the member's home server. Members can sign up at any anonymity server. However, their login, encryption, uh, decryption, and fingerprinting are only accessible through the home server. That's because they get forwarded to their home server. And it's important because you guys have set up the modules and the security and things that you would want. Hopefully, you guys can create an identity for each of your servers as well. Okay, you can set account preferences. Like account rights can only be set on a member's home server. After login, members can access preferences from the welcome screen. You'll see it. I'm going to run you guys through a whole sample of sign up and everything in a little bit. Preferences include access to services. I like this um, idea that you can basically tell your boss that they can only access uh, in, uh, they can only access the text encryption, but they can't do the MTD5 because it's too complex for them. Preferences also include open closed decryption and fingerprinting access, which we were talking about, are in, are in accordance with the security levels and also actually lets people access forums, which is just a simple PHP bulletin board script. Encrypting your email, uh, the sample tcrypt module, you log into your home server as a user. You would choose encrypt text, which is straight up from the welcome screen, ready to go. The welcome screen actually lists all accessible modules to you. Uh, and then you follow the three steps. Choose the encryption method you want. Create or copy paste text into a window. Choose save or display. If save, <clears throat> then M will save your encrypted text with your account for future decryption and present a link to you to retrieve it and decrypt it. If it's sent, it will present uh, your encrypted text for copy and paste. So it's not just for email. You guys could actually also use this for lists and other pieces of text information you guys want to save locally. In the fingerprinting, uh, and when you fingerprint a file, which is binary only, Log into your home server, choose fingerprint a file from the welcome screen, follow the three steps to choose your file, enter a unique ID or label, choose fingerprint, <clears throat> and we'll present a link used by the file recipient to match the MD5 fingerprint. Let me show you guys a demo of signing up and using the text encryption and the uh, fingerprinting. Oh, let me point something out also before we go in here. Uh, the question might arise for you guys. Um, how are the, how is the tools section um, protected? It's protected using the HTTP authentication built into PHP, so you don't have to rely on setting up HT access or anything like that on your Apache server. Um, but say you were to change, <coughs> say you were to change your email address because it is HTTP authentication, and you were to change it to Scott at getanygame.com, and you were to change your password, it would immediately expire your HTTP authentication. So although it's been changed, you now not be able to re-log on to the tools anymore uh, when you reset the server there. So now, I would actually have to restart my browser to get into it. We don't have to worry. We're going to go ahead and sign in and use the site. Uh-oh, except we don't want black there. Nothing against black. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so you join the website. It's very simple. It lists a mask server ID at the top. This is for their use. I mean, if they really want, they can write down it's six characters of the mask server ID. That matches the server ID on the tools page here that you guys can see. Obviously, we don't want to give out the server ID to the user because then maybe you could spoof it and spoof updates to the uh, main site. Um, it's all kept internally in the tools section and for the administrator's purposes. Your member name, you do a simple member name. We'll use Nancy O because it's easy to remember. Um, and use an email address. You get to set up a public PIN, and this public PIN is used. It's a six-digit public PIN number. If you want to give your boss access to decrypt your text in the link that they see, they actually have to click the link, use your public PIN to get access to it. The link contains a randomly generated session that's just for your encrypted text, and then also to added to that, because it might be hard to guess the session is done uniquely, um, they also have to access your public PIN, which you would trade them in another manner such as by email, or you could get a list of public pins, too. We'll go ahead and enter a pin, enter a password, which is 5 to 20 letters.
<coughs> you have to say, okay, that's great, make me a Mananimity member. And you join the website and you get to the welcome page. So you can see on the welcome page here that it's all set up and ready to go. You get your Mananimity logo, you get the name of your server in the middle when you guys set it up. You get your username on the left and you get a quick link to write us on the right. On the welcome page you also have all the uh, modules that are loaded up in a show mod. So any authorized modules that you have are checked, hashed through, and then displayed here. Very simply, encrypt text. Why does everyone, why does everyone think hacking is so easy? You click encrypt text, it's reasonably quick. It's just doing byte shifting on it. You can cut and paste your encrypted text. It does it for you right away. It doesn't save it. By default, it's set to send it uh, and not save it so that people uh, don't mistakenly get all their text saved. You also have the options below underneath here to send or save it. If you choose save, it generates a link for uh, someone. You can cut and paste that in your email program. Say, go ahead, send it out. And uh, they have to come and they have to enter your public PIN to decrypt the text that's there. The fingerprinting module is doing MB MD5. It has a one meg limit so that hopefully you guys won't burden your servers. We will encrypt a packet sniffer. We will choose to send that link. You can cut and paste the MD5. It's computed really quickly. You can also go back to your main page and you could choose to save the link. And then it presents you a unique link where they can come back, use the public PIN, read the MD5, and verify their file. They get a link that says browse to it, and they get it right away. On the back end of this, to show you guys some of the uh, files and scripts that are used, we have a, 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 see a, there's a style sheet used in there to create the standard look for the website, which also is extensible through the preferences. Uh, we have the new images in there, the new mark images, simple plugins for about uh, the about page, the fact page, the new GPL that it's built under. You guys will see on the main uh, on the main website here. It has full sign in, sign out. Everything's built into it. They have write us link, which goes to your admin page. They have an about link, which tells them about the application. They have a fact. They have the new GPL listed there, so that everyone can enjoy that. And then, of course, they can join and sign in. We'll sign back in. Okay, <clears throat> we sign back into it. The main PHP scripts are very quick. I mean, the entire, the entire website is actually done in 57K. <clears throat> All right, in PHP, there's uh, modules in there to manage your members, manage your sessions. It protects against session spoofing. It protects against, um, it protects against, it constantly is reevaluating uh, re the user information and setting that up for you guys. You should read through and tell me what you guys think of the scripts. I designed them for several, oh, oh, that's a lot of ice I just got in there. <laughs> I designed them for several commercial sites, some of the ones I mentioned before. So they've been out there, they've been proven. Actually, it was kind of funny, last year one of the guys who did PHP uh, uh, session hijacking was trying to do it on the website and they didn't succeed. Power to the people. All right, come on. Let's get a little power to the people. Thank you. Gosh, am I talking to myself up here? I'm going to go in the corner and cry now. No, no, I'm not going to cry. Here we go. Tools section. Very quick here. You set the preference. It does HTTP authentication. All the main pages are set as plugins. There's built-in help with it for those users who need it. This is what you guys get in a zip file. Everything underneath here with some configuration information and also a style sheet for how to write your own modules and submit them. Okay, so we went over today installing anonymity, maintaining it, using it from the admin side and the user side. Benefits of encryption and fingerprinting, which I'm sure you guys know because you're here. Um, anonymity's goal, I really want to see something that's flexible for encryption, distributed geographically and using PHP and free. In the future, I had some ideas that I thought I'd throw out there. You guys can help me with them if you want. Uh, I'd love to abstract the text and adapt it for other languages. So I'd like to actually take all the text in it 
and uh, make it a set of variables or one sheet that can go ahead and add everything to it and ready to go. Um, I'd like to do additional modules, steganography, other algorithms that are on the cutting edge that are new. Again, they're really easy to plug into it. Basically, you get an alert that they're available and you plug them in. I'd like to adapt it from the master-slave model to P2P. I'd like for Mananimity servers to discover other Mananimity servers out there and not have to rely on a central uh, Mananimity.com interface. Even though it doesn't store information, it's just better because someone tries to shut down one server. Uh, if someone tried to shut down the main server, although it does nothing, it doesn't do the encryption or anything else, then it would, be, it would kind of orphan all these servers out there. Um, I'd like to do uh, Windows Linux plugins for major email clients to automatically copy and paste. I'd like to do something with ActiveX or possibly some OLE scripting that would allow us to do it. And I would also like to try to get 100 international servers. Um, I know it's optimistic. I think it's something that you guys can really enjoy and that you will really like. And uh, I know that it's free. You unzip it. You try it out in your PHP, Apache, and MySQL server. And you'll be ready to go. In my, direct in my directory, which is actually under bresson.com, uh, on the, uh, no, I don't know what they did with it. It's my last name, at least, on there. You'll find this whole presentation. You'll find a link to the Mananimity homepage. You guys will find a couple of freeware applications that I think you'll find useful. MaxCrypt, which is a freeware new application that will actually, on Windows, encrypt your hard drive with different encryption schemes. It's really good. It's live. It's very sturdy, very well tested. You'll find GRL Real Hit in there, which lets you guys do steganography inside of uh, bitmaps. Um, and you'll find Cleaner for you guys to clean erase all files off your hard drive if you want. And um, these are three really good, solid freeware tools that you guys like. Um, I'd like to open it up to some questions now. And uh, if there aren't many questions, then maybe we'll stop it and we'll go take the talks locally. Questions, sir? Can you repeat that? Is there a mechanism to find anonymity servers? So if I would tell my friend in another country about this, is there a way for him to find the closest one to him? Yes. At, whoa. At mananimity.com, you can actually, at mananimity.com, you'll see a list of servers. But actually, if they go there and they type in, they say, the country of origin and the zip code if they're in the US, they can get a list of local servers that are active in the last 24 hours, too, which almost ensures they'll be up. Um, so that people can make discerning decisions, it also lists the modules that are out there on those servers. Does anyone else have any additional questions? Yes, yeah, wait, let me come out there, because, oh, good. Uh, your goal was 100 uh, international servers? Yes. Now, uh, are you trying to set up some sort of, uh, like an organization, like, or, or can anyone just set up a server and uh, ask to join your little network there? Yes, actually, through mananimity.com, and you guys will find it. Um, if I get a chance to update it tonight, it will be updated tomorrow. The files are sitting back in a protected directory. I just have to turn it on. But um, you'll actually, uh, I'm trying to do, and again, this is all free. This is just something that I want to get out there and get everyone to get into. But uh, mananimity.com also has a forum section and an area if you want to help develop it where you can actually sign in and uh, get more information on development, like see the modules that are in beta, test the code, post bugs, and things like that. There's a whole forum section on there. Okay, so we won't have to give up our anonymity to join men. No, exactly. And like I mentioned uh, uh, before, but that's a really, really important point, is that all you need is a valid email in order to participate in it. I think that, uh, you know, I go out there and I like uh, it's a download software. I have to enter my first name and my last name and my address and my email. And I know everyone here probably lies on it like I do. But it's like, why would you ask for that information so I can demo your software? This is designed to uh, be free software that only ties in with an email address. That's essentially your username for it. Yes, up here. He's bringing the mic for you. I'm a beatbox. Yeah. If I set up a server, I yes. contain all the keys, correct? On that one server for all my users? You have the pins in the database, yes. So what would keep somebody from setting up a server just to capture data and sniff around and just poke around and see what it's people possible, are It's possible, but one of the things that it gives you the option for is to send or save. So you don't have to save the encrypted text or don't have to save the module's information. One of the reasons I designed it that way is for the exact point you want. Some people aren't going to ever want to save the information into the database. So a user's not going to want to save their encrypted text for someone else to get. 
So instead, they can just cut and paste it and send it, use another application, and it never touches you. But couldn't I cache the page that they're looking at that says send where they're going to copy it? You mean cache the information? Well, the page that's presented that you showed as in the example that had where they would just you know, highlight, copy, couldn't I cache that page that's being displayed to them? Well, I guess you could have uh, Apache, you can write your own module in Apache to write the data out to a, uh, like a log file or something like that. But all the pages, just as a precaution, were set to no cache and stuff for the browser's sake. But yeah, I guess you could write a C module to do that, but basically you could write that anywhere. I mean, if someone wanted to go out to uh, Starbucks homepage and create a rogue module for Apache and load it up and compile it and load it in, then they could capture that data too and have it sent to them. So yeah, it is susceptible, but um, it's designed to have a reasonable level of precautions against that. So. Well, I, I guess I was just going to take the question one step further and say, how does this offer any security at all? Because you're, you're trusting everything with a third-party source that you know absolutely nothing about. There's no, there's no trust mechanisms. There's no, if you pick up the list of servers and you say, give me the nearest server, you don't know who's running it. You don't know if other people trust it. Why would you go to a third-party software, uh, which this is, uh, and trust somebody there expl like with all of your data uh, when you could just do it yourself. That's a really good idea. And again, one of the po two points with that. Number one is it's designed to be more mass market. I mean, it's designed for people who haven't taken advantage of encryption yet. But it yet. offers no security. And number two, with the no security part, is I like the trust idea. I think that's something that could be incorporated into the main website. Someone, you know, the user is vouching for the security of that site. Crypto is all about being paranoid about everything you do. I mean, uh -huh. every, every single thing in crypto is about developing not just secure algorithms, but secure protocols uh, so that somebody can't just jump into the system and decide to cheat to, to win. And in this case, anybody can just start up their own server and say, hey, I want some keys. I want to see what people are reading. They don't even have to be maliciously targeting one person. They can just say, I think I'm going to read people's email today. And it, it's, it's easy to do with this because everything is on that one server. There's no, uh, are there any mechanisms f that are in place so that a user like, doesn't have to trust the server? Is there anything like that in place? Not yet. And I think it's a really good point, like I said. I mean, it would be a good idea to build a trust voting system or a way to verify that into the main page. So you could also get a trust rating for the servers. And I think that is an important point. I definitely do. Um, you're right, people can go set that up and people could go ahead and uh, capture information. But again, the point about not saving that information, it's set by default not to. And also to um, actually not store more information about an individual uh, than is necessary on the server itself or to address those. Well, I think the trust point, again, I think he's just he's reiterating the fact that, um, that because there's no uh, trust of the individual running the server yet, you have to take that either for granted or not want to use it because of that. And it, it's a very, very good point. I totally understand that. I think we should build a trust system into it. And I wrote down a note here, and I will work on that. It's good. We should have everyone else validating that that server is trustworthy of that individual. But I'm sorry? Okay, but also, um, it, it's also important to recognize that this is designed to give you guys the starting point and the tools to kind of increase it and improve it also in the future. And uh, I appreciate you guys sitting through my talk very much. I'll be over here if you guys want to ask some questions at the end. Thank you guys very much tonight.